Now that all that girl talk is out of the way. Yeah, we had to cut all of that out. You mm-hmm. cannot know those things. You can't know those things. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, well, but you know what? One day, next year, coming 2021. Let's make our announcement now. Yeah, why not? There's going to be a, a, a girl podcast. We don't know what it's going to be called. So if most of you hopefully remember our friend Annie, mm-hmm. um, who is part of our Aversion TV network with us, and she's on the ANX Gamecast mm-hmm. podcast, um, we're, we're going to start a little side YouTube exclusive. Um, can we call it a podcast if it's YouTube exclusive? Channel? Um, I don't know. I don't gonna, know what a YouTube a YouTube channel. So I guess yeah, it'd be its so own gonna, channel under the aversion. Yeah. So we're gonna start a, a girls TV podcast. I network. think we might actually name it It's Just Girls. We might. But we'll 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 keep you posted. Um but or we're it's gonna, just for girls. No. It's yeah, so I don't know. We haven't Girl stuff. We haven't quite nailed it down yet. But um you're going to see our beautiful faces, including the beautiful Annie from Annex Gamecast um, on a, a little girls podcast yeah. channel just, thing. It will be about whatever we feel like talking Girls about. things. Mm-hmm. So please, if you are a girl or a guy. <laughs> or a guy who and wants to understand. you're very interested, <laughs> um, stay tuned after the new year. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I think we talked about this earlier. We also have other changes coming. So why not just do all of this at the beginning of the okay. episode? Okay. Well, we're we're continuing our countdown from last episode. This is 33. You have yeah. two more after this episode of our heavily researched French monarchy, royal malarkey episodes. Royal. And then somebody's belly is growing. Um. So by... by I thanks- took my first bump picture. You do have a bump. Yeah, I finally got a bump. Yeah, um, everyone can see your bump mm-hmm. because you you don't. But not here because I'm One sitting. of these obnoxiously people who don't have like belly pooch <laughs> fat kind of thing like the rest of us humans. No, when I grow in size. Very proportional. Weight, very proportional. Very yeah. proportional where the rest of us end up like, you know, where you have five-year-olds poking at your belly like, what's that? And you're like, it's <laughs> fat it's tacos. stop asking tacos from i last like night. tacos <laughs> you don't grow that way you grow very proportionally um but you definitely have that pooch now my friend yes i do you do mm-hmm. with that avocado what size are we now oh a uh, bell pepper about no you're a bell pepper last week i haven't sh- switched weeks I change over my new week is on wednesday okay so we're still a bell pepper. Mm-hmm. That's right. I did see you like Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> I. Hi, guys. We had a girls uh, weekend because Ryan was out of town. So she he stayed with me town. and it was fantastic. It was so much fun. <laughs> we watched the Spanish Queen, which is very relevant to what we're kind of talking about today. Like the whole thing. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. fantastic. <laughs> So, uh, countdown, we have three episodes, including today, yep. left, and then we will be taking a December hiatus mm-hmm. from between seasons, um, where you will see us putting out lots of story episodes. Yes. Uh, so, we have our December 1st story episode, like usual, and then on the 12th? Yeah, somewhere around there, we'll do the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah, countdown to Christmas. We'll have on Christmas Day, and then you will see us, as usual, story episode on January 1st. And then somewhere mid-January, we will kick off our new platform. Yes, and somewhere between January, February, we don't know. We'll kick off the Girls Podcast, so please stay tuned. Yes, yes, yes. And please remember to like and subscribe to... Always. I guess like this video and subscribe to to our Aversion TV and our channel, Mm -hmm. please. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you tune into ANX Gamecast, they're doing quite a few giveaways if you like gaming or anything like that. So please tune in. They have a lot of pops and I think they're even, they were doing something big, big, big. Something big's coming up if it hasn't already. So definitely check in. Don't quote me on that, but 
Ooh. We try. <laughs> we try really hard. Sorry, Marcus. We really tried. We did. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, he's he's going to get me because I think the last time I tried to advertise for them, they were like, that's not what it's called. But we look, all you got to do is go over there and look and then yeah. see if you can tell what we were talking about. Yeah. But don't quote us on anything. No. All right. Today, Ooh. we are talking about Louis the Sixth. Yes. Um, of France. But real quick, let's let me tell you about last week. Oh. Recap, please do. Mm. Oh, let me cheer with you. <laughs> Jerseys. Yes. Oh, hold on. The screen. Ching. Oh, I didn't drink. You didn't drink. I undid the cheer because <laughs> I took a drink before we did the cheers. I didn't need another drink. The reverse cheer. <laughs> what does that sound like? Like a cheer is like ah, like is the other one ha. Ah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you went all in on that. Thank yeah, I you. Did. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. Okay, so last week we told you about Philip the First of France. He was married twice. He left his first wife because he fell head over heel for bear trade a he had month like of France. Five hundred wives, and by five hundred I mean like three, right? I believe it was two. Okay. But I'm not a hundred on that. <laughs> um, so he was actually still married when he met Bear Trade, and so was she. And he went ahead and married her anyways. This is the yes. one where the lady was looking out of the castle all sad, and he was like, Oh, Bear Trade. Oh, I love you. I don't know. Protrude. Trude is fine. Anyway. But anyway. Um, and according to a French monk historian uh king philip daily grew feebler for after he had abducted the countess of anjou fair trade uh he could achieve nothing worthy of royal dignity consumed by his desire for the lady he had seized he gave himself up entirely to the satisfaction of his passion a french of him very <laughs> So today we're talking about his son, Louis VI of France, who was born in late 1081. Um, he was called Louis Le Creux. Uh -huh. The fat. That means Aww. the fat. Or uh -huh. Louis <laughs> Le Batteur, which means the fighter. Because he liked to make war. Did he have to go down as the fat? And the fighter? Fat or the fighter. Is Depends that like really on... bad diets? Like you're always fighting to lose weight, so you're the fat yeah. fighter? No, it's the wars. Because that described me more. Always fighting it. I know. Fighting what? I don't know where I'm going with anything. <laughs> I don't either. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You'd think I had drinks. <laughs> it's called pregnancy brain. What or as uh, Ryan likes to call you, P brain. Yes, he does. <laughs> or PZ. Does he call you? I haven't heard the PZ yet. It's PZ or P brain. My mom punched him. <laughs> We're sitting there playing cards. He goes, "Okay, P brain," and then my mom reaches over and goes <laughs> on the arm. And he it's was a term like, of endearment. He says it out of love because the P brain is real. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and. I I told her what that. What did you text me the other day? You were texting me at work. She'd been at my house for like three days. And you texted me at work and you said something and I'm like, huh? And oh. you're like, da -da -da -da. and I'm like, what? <laughs> and you're like, uh, da -da -da. and I'm like, I really want to be helpful right now. <laughs> But I have no idea what you're talking about. And you're like, oh, it's fine. I resolved it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> right? No clarification. No. You don't need to know. I don't even need it. Mm -mm. Pregnancy brain. Yep. Yeah, it's yep. fine. Yep. <laughs> Story of my life. Yeah. So my mom tried to undo her punch. She was. Oh, Ooh. let me wind that back. <laughs> yeah. Take it back. Anyway, back to Louis the Sixth. So he's the son of uh, Philip the First and Bertha of Holland. Mm -hmm. Um, he did get married to uh, Lucienne de Rochefort. Yes, in 1104. Um, she is, she was the daughter of his father's uh, seneschal, which I believe is like an advisor. Uh, yeah, he wanted to do the wife stuff. I was going to start with that one. Okay. Yeah. Um. So he married her in 1104, but um. 
It didn't go well, but we do you have middle stuff? Uh so I I have pre wife. Oh, let's talk about pre wife. Pre wife. Oh. Uh, so we pretty much learned everything about Louis, uh, from the deta- uh, all of his details, from the details of his life. I meant to say and none of those were normal wrong. sentences, but let me try it who, again. Who who delivered that information to us? Uh, sugar. Yes, sugar. 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 The Abbot of Saint Denis. Uh, he is a close advisor and um, bestie. So it becomes very relevant in this episode and what will likely come up in our next episode. I just mm-hmm. want to say this. If you don't remember this, we've talked about Saint Denis a lot. Yes. Um, Saint Denis is the patron saint of Paris. So relevant. Keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Sugar tells us, and this is for you, Caitlin. You want to call him Suger. No, I like sugar. Sugar. Fine, I'll give it a whirl. Do you, it. You changed the names in the middle of the episode. <laughs> I called him sugar once, and I was joking. I was already calling him sugar. Call in my him head. sugar. Fine. All right, Caitlin, tell us what sugar has to say. Uh, in his youth, growing courage matured his spirit with youthful vigor, making him bored with hunting. And the boyish games with which others of his age used to enjoy themselves and forget the pursuit of arms. Sorry about the British accent. It happens randomly Mm. and without, I have no control over it. Um, And how valiant he was in youth and with what energy he repelled the king of the English, William Rufus, when he attacked Louis' inherited kingdom. So, real quick, William Rufus is William the Conqueror's third son, and at this point, he was the King of England. So, if you will remember, and if you don't, it's fine, because I already wrote it down. (laughs) (laughs) In episode 31, we told you that Henry I, Louis VI's grandfather, rescued a young nephew of his from trouble, uh, and that nephew was William the Conqueror. Shut up. We didn't cover that. We did cover that. Okay. Reminding. (laughs) Shut up. I forgot. (laughs) I was thinking like, oh, we missed an opportunity. And you're like, no, we talked about it. Definitely. The (laughs) opportunity (laughs) came and went. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So next in 1104. Oh, wrong wife. He married Lucien and de Rochefort. Yes. They were married for three years, but they did not have any babies together. No, which is why uh, in 1107, he repudiated her, Mm. which basically means they had the marriage annulled because they said they were too closely related. Mm -hmm. Um, And they also claimed that it was not consummated. Yes. Um, Three years. So the marriage was annulled on May 23rd of 1107 at the Council of Troy by Pope Paschal II. So there are speculations that his stepmother, Bertrade of Montfort, 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 the one that his dad was so madly in love with, uh, they she had boys with him and she really wanted her sons to rule. But Louis the Sixth was really first in line um, and she kind of encouraged. So rumor says the annulment, thinking that it would help weaken his rule and make her son more likely to become king. And Louis would have to deal with these consequences uh, in the form of a rebellion by Lucien's family. Mm. Yeah. So, next slide. We're talking about his next wife. So, on August 3rd of 1115, Louis married Adelaide of Maurienne. She's the daughter of... Uh, Umbert II of Savoy and Gisela of Burgundy, and she is actually the niece of Pope Calixtus II. Hmm. They actually had eight children. Get on the mic. Eight children together. <laughs> Kiss the mic. Gently. Uh, they had eight children together. Wow. Um, and she was actually one of the most politically active of all of France's queens. So even though we've talked about women who had kind of political ambition and she was actually one of the most active in, in French history, um, her name appears on 45 royal charters um, from her husband's reign. Wow. And um, during her time as queen, royal charters were dated with both her 
Regnal Year and the Kings. So very, very uh, influential. Her children, eight, their children. Um, so Philip, who was born on August 29th, um, he does become the next king of France. Um, not to be confused with the brother he had who was born later and also named Philip. Um, Louis the... What? Mm -hmm. Are you wedding with me? No, I'm agreeing with you. Okay. Louis the... What? Seventh. You're correct. Okay. I'm going to let you clarify that later because I just got really confused all of a sudden. Sorry, guys. It won't be clarified till next week. Ah, uh, <laughs> Louis the Seventh, who is also king of France, born 1120, Henry 1121, who becomes the Archbishop of Rheims, Hugh, born in 1122, but dies young, Robert, born in 1123, Count of Dreux, Peter, God, lots of sons, they were like solid in their line, right? Mm -hmm. Peter, born September in 1126, he married um, Elizabeth, who was Lady of Courtenay. Constance, finally a girl, born in 1128. She married the Count of Bologna and then the Count of Toulouse. Um, and then Philip, who became the Archdeacon of Paris. Oh, Paris. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Anything else on his lovely wife? That was all eight of them. Oh, he does have one more child with a woman named Marie de Boudier. He's the daughter of Renaud de Boudier de Bourdon, who du Dordon, um, but that was an illegitimate child. Back to Louis. <gasps> that was a lot. Mm -hmm. Eight kids. Mm -hmm. You know, my sister wants to have four, and I'm like, that's a lot. I want four. It's a lot. I know. I'm like, do I want one? Don't I? I'm like a good aunt. One? I feel like I'm <laughs> solid in the ant role. Do I need I my think, own? I think we're both sure. pretty great ants. But right. ants get um, promoted. I got my <laughs> hair cut today. <laughs> um, and there was a mom with her two kids there. And first of all, there was a girl. I'm going to go 11. Uh -huh. And she's um, she's got this thick, gorgeous, dark hair, which, as you can tell, I have gorgeous dark hair. Uh, but it's not thick at all. It's very thin hair. And she's getting her gorgeous, thick, dark hair cut, and they're blow-drying her, and she's just doing this the whole time. Like, <laughs> it hurt. And I'm like, you know what I would give for that hair, first of all? You don't even know. But she's like 10 or 11, and she's clearly very tender-headed, and it's bothering her. And, like, the mom's over there trying to control this, like, two-year-old boy mm -hmm. and on her cell phone. <laughs> I'm ignoring both of them, and I'm like... She's like, oh. And so it's finally mom's time to get her hair um, blow dried. And so this 10 or 11 year old girl who hated having her hair blow dried is now in charge of the two year old. This two year old is running around screaming and doing this like he's just learned to run things. So he's like doing this like slow mo run. Nice. And then taking off as fast as he can. And like he's enjoying himself. <laughs> And causing a very loud, obnoxious ruckus in the entire salon. And I'm sitting here like, because I get my hair done with my sister. And I'm just sitting here like, I think I'm going to let you do that. I'm going to let you handle that. I'm fine. Do I need to do that? <laughs> mm -mm. Somebody else can. Nah. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, but maybe not. You're funny. Anyway. Mm. Um, where were we? You were going to tell us more about Louis since I just went through this, like, long uh, list of his eight children with Adelaide. Oh, right. Then we went off about kids. Yeah. So that many. happened. Yeah. So, Sugel became Louis' advisor even before he succeeded his father as king at the age of 26 on July 29th mm -hmm. of 1108. Uh, his major kingly influences and challenges. Uh, I'm just going to give you kind of a list of them. Please. In a way. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Um, so there was a bunch of small principalities 
that Louis started to assert power over and bring them under the rule of Francia. Mm -hmm. And this started during his reign, but really wouldn't be completed for another 200 years. So if, if you'll remember, I think our last king left us with the smallest Francia ever. Is that right? Somewhere in the last few episodes that happened. I think last week. Okay. Um, I think it was. And Louis is very much credited for bringing under control mm -hmm. Francia. Yeah. So while they have a king, most of them really didn't give a crap that Like he was, king. <laughs> he was in control of the Ile de France, which we've talked about before. It's the little island in the middle of the Seine. It's where Notre Dame would eventually be built. It's Notre Dame was the palace of the kings before it was like a big and I don't know the whole story on that, so don't quote me, but cities in this era were built around where the holy you know, church, whatever it was, mm -hmm. was built. And so right now they really only occupy the Ile de France, which is this island in the middle of the Seine River where Paris is now. But they have all these little, like you were saying, these little principalities that were ruled by noblemen. And while in theory, these noblemen report to the king, yeah, they didn't in actuality. And he's kind of the first king that, that really kind of reigned unintended reined all of that in and it was like no you do actually report to me in a way like i know the last few guys let you do whatever you want that's um, not how this works no and as a perfect example of that because you really led perfectly into my next point uh it's like we studied the same thing <laughs> <laughs> there were just so many robber barons i know i told you that in episode 31 um I told you that a robber baron was an authoritarian leader who would heavily tax their serfs. Some would go so far as to plunder the homes and churches within their regions and some of them their neighbors. Mm -hmm. And some barons even charged tolls to wayward merchants and pilgrims. So really everyone acted in their own way, all of these noble barons, and they just took whatever they wanted as they wanted it mm -hmm. within their little homestead area um but sometimes they would go outside of that so some of the outlaws became notorious for their cruelty uh yes. the most notable one being thomas lord of Osi? Cousy? he was reputed to reputed yeah oh yeah he was reputed to indulge Did he? huh dookie dookie you <laughs> Repeated, yes. Mm. Who is reputed to <laughs> indulge in the torture of his victims. So, including hanging man, men by their testicles. I feel like that would call me crazy. But Not like, work. Like, say, you feel like they wouldn't stay up there very long. No. Like, it would tear. Yeah. I would assume a quick death would then ensue. Right? I right. don't feel like you could... It's not like being hung from like a limb or a neck or like your know, bone arm. structure that yeah. really kind of holds it together. For a while. There's no bone structure. I feel like that mm. would just give way. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> he would cut out eyes yeah. or chop off people's feet. So, <sighs> Gilbert <sighs> of Nogent? Nogent? Uh, Nogent? Nogent. Jean. Jean. Noted him of uh, no one can imagine the number of those who perished in his dungeons from starvation, from torture, or from filth. I got that whole bit straight up from Wikipedia. So it's legit. Yeah. I just didn't feel like I could rewrite it. No, I agree. Decently. Most of mine is it's upsetting. From, and we love you guys, but in the last three episodes, like, the time we have to dedicate, like... <laughs> We're we're Wikipedia solid. Yeah, we're we're dwindling on our time available to would hence the changes that are coming. Mm -hmm. So he also had to put down rebellious plots led by his half brother, who was the son of Bear Train. That happened a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, another terrible robber baron was Hugh, Lord of Le Puiset. Le Puiset. Cool. Not even gonna go or try. Puiset. 
Uh, Louis <laughs> stripped him of his lands and titles and laid siege to Le Posé. Uh, after a fierce struggle, Louis took the castle and burned it to the ground, taking Hugh prisoner. But while Louis was battling Henry I, tell you a little bit more about that in a second, he released Hugh, you know, on a pinky promise. Basically, you're not going to go ravaging my lands I'll again, I'll let you are go you? if you don't do that again. Okay, thanks. I pinky promise. Stop hanging me by my balls. <laughs> Wrong guy. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, I mean, that should never happen. <laughs> no. Can't uh, end well. It can't. I can't imagine the torture even lasting very long. Ugh. Right? Like, oh like, my God. Oh, look, he's dead. Let me. Yeah. They. Ah. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, surprise, surprise, he raised another army and did the same thing. Uh, so, Louis had to turn around from his whole war thing with with uh, Henry I to go stop stupid Hugh from pillaging and you know, just plundering the lands. Turning people against him. Yeah. So he burned down the castle again. And mm-hmm. Hugh promised again to stop plundering. And I'm not going to challenge you anymore. You beat me twice. And I swear I'm never going to return to this castle or its ruins. And then he did. He returned and rebuilt and reassumed his robbery ways. <laughs> oh, Lord. So Louis finally came back, stripped him of all of his possessions, titles, and whatnots, and Hugh died on a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, trying to make up for his woeful deeds, I assume. Or trying to get to another army to do that a whole thing over again. Far more likely. Yeah. So you might be asking the question. Why is it so many back and forth? Why didn't he just take all of his possessions from the beginning? Like, why was it he thought he thought burning down the castle would be enough of a message? You know, mm-hmm. stop. Mm-hmm. But he didn't. Uh, it's just that there were so many robber barons at the time. It was like everyone around him. So you're saying that Paris is in the middle almost. And everybody around him who he's supposed to be ruling, well, Paris at the they're just time, all jerks. Yeah, <laughs> so it's just on the Ile de France. So you actually can't cross, I think at the time, you can't cross the Seine if you don't go through the uh, Ile de France. So you're kind of looking at like a trade issue mm. where they're constantly plaguing the outlying on either side because they're actually trying to get to the Seine to trade. Yeah, so it's it's was probably the second biggest thing that marked his reign. The f- the biggest being his battles with King Henry the First of England. So over here on YouTube, we've got King Henry the First on Caitlin's side. The and photos are quite getting better, aren't they? I think so. Yeah, and then Louis the si- Sixth from Francia, uh, he's on my side. So, I. Uh, why was Henry such a problem? It's because he was re- he was actually uniting the force of England. All the Anglos that were over there and kind of were doing their own thing. Suddenly, um, they were finally united instead of fighting each other. Well, and- what we don't realize probably in present day France is there's this top corner in the north uh, west mm-hmm. that's called Brittany and Normandy. Um, and that has been back and forth between British and English rule for a very long time. Um, and so they're constantly battling over it because Britain, it's really close to Britain. There are a couple of islands in the channel um, that are, are British Isles across the channel and close to the channel. And then it's just so, if you, you can literally see, so I've been to, um, Wherever, um, somewhere, what, uh, Winston Churchill had, um, Dover. So he had like, um, caves in Dover because you can literally see the coast of France in Dover. It's, it's not far. It's mm-hmm. really close. You can see. So Dover has these white, what well, you've heard, I'm sure everyone's heard of the white, uh, cliffs. Yeah. And and they have white cliffs in Dover, and then you can see the white cliffs in France from Dover. It's close enough that 
standing on one shore, you can see the other one. Wow. So it, it's it's so close that it's very easy for Britain, mm-hmm. right, to try to continue to occupy it. Mm-hmm. And they did. And they were very back and forth throughout history from this time to, I, I don't know, it's like this I get at some the, point they stopped fighting over it. But, somebody claimed it finally. Right. But it's still called Brittany. Mm-hmm. You know, because it was, it was part of Britain for a period in history. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, I believe this is Henry the First from the Netflix film, The King. Is it? I assumed you would have that information. I you don't. do the movie stuff. But I did not come across that at all. And I spent quite a bit of time, more time than usual, hmm. researching. So I believe. The one and with I was Timothy not able to confirm. Sh- Chalamet? What? The one with Timothy Chalamet? Yes. So you you look that up real quick as I'm I continue. Gonna, um, the one with Robert Pattinson covertly. as yeah. the Dauphin. And King. he's like really obnoxious. I haven't seen the movie yet, but no, I believe you haven't this seen is... It. Nobody's... Ob- oh, I guess... Um, nobody's what? Nobody's obnoxious. I guess uh, Robert Pattinson's a little obnoxious, but is that who you meant? I'm really confused. Whatever. Continue. Uh, I was just saying, I haven't seen the movie yet, but uh, the Dauphin plays a really, Robert Pattinson plays this like really um, full of himself, spoiled, rich, uh, you know, future king of France. And he comes to negotiate with Henry the first. And it's just really. Spoiler alert. This will be our first episode (gasps) of our new uh, platform in January. Mm. The King will be our first episode. Fantastic. I'm excited. We will be covering this movie. Awesome. Mid-January. So please tune in. Awesome. It does. He plays Henry Prince of Wales. That's the right one, isn't it? No, he plays Henry V. Ah, I was wrong, everyone. Last episode, he plays Henry V. Last Henry. Oh, we're on Louis. We're discussing Henry the First, yeah, in fr- in England. And my brain melded Henry and Louis there for wowza. A no, um, he plays Henry the Fifth, who is in thirteen eighty six. So we have, we didn't get there. So I'm wrong. Basically, You're I wrong, assumed and I did not do the research. We gave you a foreshadowing into a, a glimpse into the future, if you the will. First episode of the new year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so moving on from my incorrect assumption, uh, Henry had seized lands, uh, and a cast and, uh, this violated a treaty that had been standing between England and France. Uh, Louis demanded that they meet to discuss the terms and Louis flat out challenged Henry to a single combat, uh, to settle the issue mano a mano. Is that the right? Yeah. Mano a mano. Man on man. All right, cool. One on one. Let's save our armies. Yeah, let's just do this. when I duke this out and see who wins. And uh, Henry flat out refused. No, man, I don't want to die. No, I can't. That's not a battle I can win. <laughs> uh, you're known for being not the sucker. fighter. That's why I brought the boys. And he's not fat yet, so he's just the fighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Henry refused, refused, and this led to a 20-year-ish war. Mm-hmm. Sounds like fun. Love it. Uh, so Louis had the upper hand for the majority of this war until an extremely influential count. Oh, what happened to my slideshow? Here we are. <laughs> you hit a button. I hit a button. <laughs> a few buttons. Many, many, many. At some point. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Didn't even notice. Me neither. Uh, so let's see. I lost most. The count. Who was the influential yes. count? There is a very influential count who switched over from Louis' side to Henry's. He does actually swap quite a lot. Uh, we're talking this, about Thibault. I didn't write his name down. His name was Thibault. Thibault, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. And he, he does quite a lot of flopping. He's he's one of those robber barons. But this one is very influential and a little less tortury. Yeah. Uh, and he persuaded a bunch of other robber barons, the terrible leaders, mm-hmm. to also join him and fight against their Frankish king in favor of the English king. Mm-hmm. And so Louis had to stop fighting Henry, where he w- had the lead at some point, 
and then lost it because he had to deal with Frankia. Mm-hmm. And because of this, he had he was forced to make peace with Henry, uh, and he ceded Brittany and Maine. And the peace only lasted about three years. Brittany and Maine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they went back to war pretty much immediately. Well, I guess three years is kind of a long time for peace. I mean, it is a substantial peace, right? And when I say he he put down these robber barons, he like put them in their place and was able to take uh, control over their lands. Like he was able to uh, push Capetian power over them and actually like put it back as a part of France as opposed to every next king is like, ah, we don't really need to listen to you. Like they, he finally was able to exert enough power over them that they, they obeyed. Uh, so it was three years of actual peace Mm -hmm. until they went back to war and Louis health was failing him a bit. So he asked the Pope to help him reach out for peace. So for those of you watching on YouTube, you can see Louis the sixth and the Pope, uh, he's asking him for help. Please, help please, please me. make Henry listen help to me. Help me. Oh, not the Pope. Yeah, I was about to say wrong, wrong side. The Pope is like, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> um, and basically, he did not. He did not get everything he wanted out of the peace. But at least there was peace, and he was able to go. Uh, move on with his failing health. Um, so there's a lot more of those things. If you have more of them, you're welcome to share. I don't have any more. I stopped there because those were kind of the ones I really wanted to share. With so everybody. part of his failing health, um, he spent like his 29, as Clarissa definitely explained over the last however long, he spent most of his 29 year reign fighting robber barons um, who kind of just plagued Paris constantly, mm-hmm. um, or eventually the kings of England for possession of Normandy, which is what you went over. Um, he did manage to reinforce his power considerably over his reign and did become one of the first strong kings of France since Charlemagne died in 814. So he's kind of known as the, the next strong king after Charlemagne because everyone else kind of was m- mediocre, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he was known as a warrior king, but as you were mentioning, by his 40s, he was gaining so much weight for whatever reason. Um, it was increasingly difficult for him to actually go into battle and lead any battles. So um, uh, we talked about this a little on April 9th of 1137. William the Tenth, the Duke of Aquitaine, appointed him the guardian of his, I don't think we talked about this, his 15-year-old daughter, Eleanor of Aquitaine. Um, So she had kind of suddenly become the most eligible heiress in Europe, um, and he had big plans for her, which we will talk about next episode. Um, But keep Eleanor of Aquitaine in your brain, um, because she will come up again. Mm -hmm. So Louis actually died, uh, Louis the... Six actually died of dysentery um, seven days after the battle. Oh, no. Seven days. Oh, we won't go there. Should we go there? Just seven days after he married off his son to the most esteemed bachelorette. I guess we'll go there. We'll talk about it much more next episode. Yeah. But he, he becomes the guardian of Eleanor of Aquitaine and very, very quickly marries her to his son, Louis the Seventh, Because she brought the whole of Aquitaine with All her All of Aquitaine that, that hasn't been a part of France in quite a long time. Mm-hmm. So um, he, he marries her to his son and then very, very, very quickly, seven days later, dies of dysentery, August 1st of 1137. What happened at that wedding? Because dysentery is like a, a water it's issue, what, it, right? Yeah, it's, um, they can't, I think it has to do with the sewage, like they can't. Right, they're not filtering out waste, mm-hmm. and so they're kind of, well, When anyway. they throw it into the into the river that they drink out of. Yeah, Ugh. exactly. Um, so despite his achievements, it would be, um, it would be the growing power of the soon-to-be 
Angevin Empire that would come to overshadow his successor. So we'll talk a little bit more about um, his son, obviously next episode, who becomes his heir. Um, he was interred at the Basilica of Saint-Denis in Paris. I think it's time for our relevant tidbit. This week from learner.org. Yes, please. Caitlin's going to tell you about medieval homes and what they were like. Yes, I am. Check out the link in the show notes if you want to see more about it. Learner.org. Um, so most medieval homes were cold, damp, and dark. Sometimes it was warmer and lighter outside the home than within its walls. Love you, but could you move it? Because it actually cuts yeah. off. I didn't Thank know. you. Perfect. Um, for security purposes, windows where they, when they were present, were very small openings with wooden shutters uh, that were closed at night or in bad weather. The small size of the windows allowed those inside to see out, but kept outsiders from looking in. And I imagine robber barons from jumping inside your they window were at night. a plague. Many peasant families ate, slept, and spent time together in very small quarters, rarely more than one or two rooms. The houses had thatched roofs and were easily destroyed. <laughs> easily. I mean, you see the movies where they just burn whole towns, right? I it's guess literally they, they were, carry they one went up torch. like a Christmas tree. Carry one torch and you just put it at yeah. the side and it just goes. And it's like, boom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining us on episode 33, Countdown. This is the third to last episode of our royal malarkey, yes. French monarchy. Please like this video and hit the subscribe button to see more from us. We have stories that come out once a month, and we've got a bunch of them coming for you in December. Yes, There's we do. so much happening here at Royal Malarkey. Did you forget our name? No, I just couldn't say it. <laughs> Hi, Lark. Please follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you are watching us on YouTube, thank you. And please hit the subscribe button, like, and even comment on our episode to let us know what you thought. If you are an avid podcast listener, please go to iTunes and rate and review us so that we can keep the podcast going. We love hearing from you guys. We love hearing from you so much. We will see you next week, episode 34. All right. Bye. Toodles. Mm -hmm.